It's my secret recipe. I don't share this one very often, but today I'm going to. Welcome back to my channel. I have the best banana bread recipe out there. I know you're going to tell me that yours is the best there is too. That's okay, because for me, this one is the best one that I have found for our family, and I love it. I have shared this with very few people because it's kind of been my secret recipe. But today, I am going to share it with you. Just don't tell anyone else. This is not just a regular banana bread, it's a banana blueberry bread. It is so good. It is so moist. I mean, you're just going to love it. So let's get right into making this. The first ingredient that I'm going to add is one cup of sugar. This is just regular granulated sugar. I'm using a half cup measure, so that's why I'm adding two. And then I'm going to add a half a cup of shortening. This is just regular Crisco shortening. Now I'm adding two eggs. These are farm fresh eggs. Look how golden those yolks are. Oh, they're just they're like an orangey color. That's a real fresh egg. Now I'm going to mix this up. I want to mix this until it's a very creamy consistency. I don't feel like I can get that when I use a spoon, so that's why I use an electric mixer. But feel free to use a spoon if you like. I have done that as well. So now I'm adding bananas. These are bananas that I keep in my freezer. I know they're dark, but the freezer will do that to them. And the darker they are, the sweeter they are. And that was three bananas, by the way. Now I'm adding my flour. It's two and a half cups of flour and one teaspoon of baking soda and one teaspoon of baking powder. So you want to put all of those dry ingredients in together and then you want to mix them all up. I'm not mixing them until completely combined. I'm just mixing them all together until it looks like I really need a liquid added in there. And that is what I'm going to do next. I am adding a half a cup of sour milk. I actually keep sour milk on hand just because I make this a lot. But if you don't have sour milk on hand, that's all right. You can take a tablespoon of white vinegar and put it in the bottom of your measuring cup and then add regular milk to it and that will sour it up fine. Now I'm just going to mix that all up really well. I just want to get all the ingredients mixed up. You want to make sure all the flour and everything gets pulled up from off of the bottom of the bowl. Sometimes we like to add nuts, sometimes we don't. My husband usually does, but I didn't on this day. But I am going to add blueberries. I'm adding two cups of frozen blueberries. This is going to be so good. I'm telling you, if you've never done this before, you have to try it. I think this is what gives it such a moist uh, texture to the bread. I'm going to get all of this into a loaf pan. I'm just using a regular size loaf pan, and I did grease it. You want to make sure you grease it well because you really want your bread to come out uh, when it's finished. So let's just scoop all of that goodness right in there. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you, this is the best bread. And feel free to put this into smaller loaf pans if you like. They do make really great gifts and I have done that around the holidays. And also, if you want to use something different, I'm sure you could use strawberries. I think strawberries would go well with bananas. This next step is totally optional. I'm just adding a little bit of turbinado sugar to the top of this, just for a little added texture and shine. I love it that way, but like I said, it's totally optional. Now, let's get it into the oven. Okay, so the banana bread is in the oven. I set the temperature for 350 degrees and typically if I'm just doing banana bread I leave it in the oven for one hour but because I've added the blueberries I find it'll take anywhere between an hour and 10 to an hour and 15 minutes so usually at 
an hour and five minutes, I will start picking it and checking it with the little cake tester in the center to make sure that cake tester comes out clean. This bread really is so moist and delicious. It You're just going to love it if you try it. So just you wait and see. I will show you once it comes out what it looks like. But for right now, let's take a look around the pantry. This is the outside of the pantry. We walk in through a screen door. I love this because it helps keep animals out. <laughs> if you have a cat or a dog, and it also barricades little ones if you uh, don't want them in there when they're really small. We used to have a dog, however, she passed and we no longer have her. So I'm going to open this up and this is the inside of our pantry. Now this room is very well loved. It's used daily. So this is as is condition. I didn't come in and clean anything up. <laughs> so if you see any any messes, it's because, like I said, it's very lived in. So let's start over here on the left. And on the left, you can see this back here has become a stockpile of chips. <laughs> That's where the girls put their um, bags of chips that they um, they bring when they, they come over and visit. They have a lot of their own foods here as snacks. This is our Berkey water filter. It uh, purifies and filters our water and it's great because the kids can come in here and they can get their own glass of water. It's got the little spigot on uh, the bottom of it and it's just perfect for little ones. This is an old cabinet that belonged to my husband's grandmother. It was in her house for many years and she used this for a lot of her spices and she also would roll her bread out on the breadboard. I can pull this open and show you what it looks like on the inside. This latch doesn't work anymore. It's, it's just really old and maybe shifted. So we use this turn, little turn buckle and bring this down and really it's just a lot of old-timey things. I just like to keep, you know, things in here that are nostalgic. Um, some of the things we still, you know, that you can still find in a store and some things you can't. And I just love all of that stuff. This box here is a box of seeds that belong to my husband's brother. I think he was selling seeds or something at one time. He was uh, quite young. He passed away when he was 17, so that's pretty old, so we hang on to that. Uh, these are recipe boxes that belong to um, relatives of uh, mine and Joe's, and they're pretty old. They're tin, so we hang on to those. And uh, that's just the wall in the back. There's no um, back on this cabinet. It just sits up on the wall. So we'll close this. I love that it has the bread board on it and uh, can make bread or years ago my husband's grandmother used to make her bread in there. This is my uh, one of my bread recipes that I hang on this cabinet. These This hanger is actually to hang a pair of slacks. Um, I don't know that you see many of these anymore but they're perfect for hanging recipes. <laughs> So it just uh, kind of sticks in, in between the two slots and I just hang it up there and it's a great place to keep recipes. And down here I have my garlic keeper and we always have lots of tea. Lots and lots of tea. Let me show you. Lots and lots of tea. We are tea drinkers. So let's move along here. This is the baking side. So I've got lots of baking ingredients. I have a lot of dip mixes or you can use it for popcorn. It's sour cream and onion, I think, and um, powdered sugar and different things like that. I've got timers and I do have floss because that's great for cutting pastries like um, cinnamon rolls and stuff. I use that to, to cut those. 
and all the spices and again I've shown you numerous times that these are just the top to a um, Parmesan Parmesan uh, cheese container they're perfect for your seasonings and you can see there's someone here too I don't know if these will fit onto the mason jars but the one from the Parmesan will different extracts and things and a cute little sign it's just something that was um, I think it was a gift I'm gonna go down here a little bit before I go back up and this is a hand pump it was my father-in-law's and he gifted that to us many years ago and he really wanted us to hook it up in our house <laughs> I don't know how we would hook it up here but it it looks it's nice for looks anyway maybe someday we'll get it hooked up these are a couple bottles of some extracts uh, this is vanilla homemade vanilla you can see the vanilla beans in there and then this one is some chocolate mint extract and I do make these myself um, if you're interested in knowing how to do that I can uh, I can create a video on that just let me know in the comments below those are all the jars with all the things and I'm running low on all the things this is brown sugar and we usually make our own brown sugar on demand this is organic cane sugar and I need to buy some more this is self-rising flour and I do make that myself also and this is some um, you've seen me make this this is orange sugar made with a zest of an orange and a little bit of sugar it's great for using in my scones and muffins some oats some einkorn flour some rye flour some rice there's uh, bread flour back there so all the things and this is my little baking central so I have my homemade vanilla and I have my salt and my uh, little cutter these are just show different measurements and things and my teaspoons tablespoons wooden spoons whisk spatulas all the things it's just this is mainly where everything happens is right here on this on this breadboard and this is my sourdough starter. You can see how nice and bubbly this is because I put some, I fed it last night so it's good to go this morning and at some point I'm going to make some stuff with that today. Yesterday I did do uh, homemade sandwich, soft sandwich bread um, that's sourdough. And that's really delicious. Some bananas, the green mill, you've seen that in action, my Bosch mixer and just some, um, we always buy a lot of things in bulk and our um, plastic wrap is one of those things. Up on the second shelf next to the tea we have a lot of different things. This is my mother-in-law's, it, it was hers, uh, recipe box from uh, many years ago. And just some ingredients really, just different baking ingredients. Just a lot of stuff. I mean, some stuff has to go in jars because as I've gotten it, I've just kind of thrown it up on the shelf, but that's okay. We'll get to it. This is a meat grinder and it belonged to my grandmother. So I keep that in here just as a reminder of her and it's just a, a sweet memory. And up here, these are used for storage, just things that we don't use often. And then you have a lot of storage jars and things. Some are, uh, for summer we can put our lemonade or iced tea in there. Just different stuff that we use, but not often. While I'm up, <laughs> let's, let's look up further. This is a general store lamp, it's called. It was a gift from my husband for my birthday before we even built the house. I knew exactly where I was going to put it. This is a tin ceiling. We love having this in here. It's just, it just reflects the light so well and brightens up this little space. This is a space that's about, um, I think it's 10 by nine. 
the main focus of this room as you walk in is this beautiful sink and hand pump and window is just the most beautiful area. And I did stencil on here, a simple life, because this truly is a simple life and I love my simple life. And it may not be easy, but you know, we try to live as simply as possible. So if we look up on the side, we have a lot of bowls. I use bowls. I love bowls. They're always out. I love them. I have some beeswax covers that I made myself. Those are fabulous to use. And in the very, very back, you can see a gumball machine. This is used a lot. See, there's not many gumballs in there. Our grandkids love this thing. It's from 1925. My husband bought it at an antique store many years ago. And it still has the key and everything. It's just, it's a wonderful little thing. And uh, I hope our kids always remember the memory of coming in here and saying, Mimi, can I have some gum? And they come in here and they just, they gather their nickels. They usually come with their nickels, <laughs> put them in the machine and uh, turn that. They guess the color before it comes out and they, they really love that. So it's a sweet memory. This is a basket, a wire basket that we use to um, put our onions in mostly. Uh, sometimes we have sweet potatoes in there or, or other things. It's just very handy. And on this shelf is a lot of the dried goods. A lot of the um, pastas and beans and legumes, rices, things like that. And if you go up, it's just a lot of, well, this is my husband's little collection here of old stuff loves all of those things and uh, this is homemade breadcrumbs that we use and actually <laughs> got homemade breadcrumbs in there too just utilizing the same container I should swap them over to glass they'll last a lot longer but there are a lot of crackers mostly just crackers and and uh, breading and stuff so, and then we come over here and we have these baskets. These baskets are filled with seasonings and uh, gravy packets or uh, dips, mixes, and, and things like that that we have on hand, ready to use if we need them. And these are a lot of cookbooks. You can see my calendar. More bowls, because we just love bowls. And this cabinet here is, uh, it's got a lot of canned stuff in here. Let me show you. There's a lot of jams and jellies and I think, um, yeah, I think it's mostly jams and jellies for sure. There's some, a little jar of nutmeg, little, uh, what do they call those? Little nutmegs. It's got some of those in there. There's some, oh, some dried cranberries that are sealed. I think there's some nuts and things on the other side that are all sealed until we're ready to use them. And this really is kind of a catch-all. Right now you can see we're getting ready for um, planting. We're going to be starting our seeds in our basement greenhouse. So my husband's been going through a lot of the seeds. So that's what you're seeing there. So that's all pile of seeds and seed catalogs. And there's some more seeds in this container here. This is some maple syrup that we got last year in Vermont. We bought three of these jugs. So um, they've lasted us quite well. There's a lot of lids, jars and things, more cookbooks. And underneath of this cabinet, you can see it's just containers. There's the flour and there's uh, regular granulated sugar in there. There's some buckets in the back that hold some red wheat berries and some oats, uh, maybe some rice. Uh, this is a french fry cutter. It was given to my husband. It's all steel. Works very well when you're making french fries. And there's a bread box in behind here that I rescued from a Oh, is it a yard sale or or some type of flea market or something? Let's see, I keep my mixer and all of its components in there. 
and my kitchen scale and this is a little um, basket filled with headlamps because we do use those and here's another breadboard this was given to me by a friend and we still have some pumpkins to use We've got to use those and just a few things I love rolling pins it's in an old fur kin and we're back here so that is a tour of the pantry if you're wondering what's underneath or as my granddaughter used to say under the neath just a lot of equipment and things we have an air fryer under there and our ninja is under there our um, vacuum sealer is under there um, just a lot of things the, uh, we've got a rice cooker and and uh, instant pot and stuff like that it's just really good for storage for things like that that you kind of want out of sight I hope you enjoyed this little tour of what really is our favorite room in the house. So there you have it, my little pantry tour. And like I said, I do have a makeover video that shows um, the pantry the way it was before and how I made it over so I do hope you go check that one out so our bread is out of the oven it's, the pan is still a little bit warm you can see the sugar on the top which is totally optional I just think it dresses it up a little bit you can see it kind of glistens and sparkles I'm going to flip this over and hope I can get it out like I said it's still a little bit warm there we go there we go. Oh my gosh. This does make one loaf. It's a large loaf. So let's cut into this bread. Let's see. It's got a nice crust on the outside. I mean, just look at that. It's blueberry goodness. Now I always keep the end piece because once I've cut off of this, I close it with the end piece and I bag it up and keep it in there. So I don't know how you do it, but that's how I do it. So I'm going to cut another piece. It's still warm, so it's kind of, it kind of wants to fall apart. Let me get a plate here. Okay, so look at this. Well, minus this piece. Maybe I'll just eat this piece. This bread really is very delicious and I would encourage you to make some yourself. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed to my newsletter, you can do that. The link is in the description box below this video. My recipe will be fully written out for you if you'd like to print it off. Just click on the link, follow the prompts, and don't forget, go to your email and verify that you have subscribed. Thank you for watching and until next time.